In this video, we're going to be installing the Wald 215 rear bike rack. Now, I'm not doing an unboxing or anything because there's really, really nothing to see. It was a pl I got this from uh, not Amazon, but another bike company. I'll put the link down below. Ended up being a few dollars cheaper than Amazon.com. So uh, it came in just a plain old box with just some, uh, some packing material, but absolutely no instructions, no paperwork other than just the order form. So there's nothing to see as far as unboxing it. And this is exactly what it came with and what I got, which was this uh, little metal clipped on bag, which appears to have just the mount and uh, a few nuts and bolts. Let's go ahead and take that off. I'll give you a slightly closer look here at the rear rack. Quality does seem to be very nice. I think it's uh, chrome plated. All steel, it's pretty heavy actually. I mean, as far as a, a little rack goes, it's a very basic rack. All right, let's head over to the bike and get it installed. Here's the bike that we're going to be installing it onto today. It's up on my bike rack, as you can see. Should go something like that. It's a little bit hard to tell, you know, where level is because the whole bike is slanted at the moment but I think it'll be something like that. The first thing I'm seeing right away is the width here. The width here is much narrower than, than my frame is. So we're gonna have to bend this out clearly. So if I take my digital calipers, the dimension of the inside here is about 110. I think it's been a long time since bikes have had only 110 millimeters between, uh, between the rear axle, the rear triangle spacing. This one's probably, I don't know, 135 or something like that. So we're going to have to bend it out quite a bit. I think that should be okay. But just to let you know, it's not going to drop straight in probably on most people's bikes unless you have a much older bike. And really, we'll want to mount this on the outside because I don't think there will be enough space to mount it on the inside of the rear triangle uh, due to the, the chain. So we'll probably want to mount it like that. And if we do it like that, there is a, a huge gap over here. I mean, it's about an inch, it looks like. It's really huge. And it might be my fault for not reading the product description thoroughly, but I really didn't expect it to be so, so narrow here. So let's see if we can just bend it. Kind of the problem, well, it bent really easy, first of all. Kind of the problem though with bending it is now you're actually, <clears throat> excuse me. Kind of the problem with bending it though is you're actually gonna be changing the angle of the mounts and you can only do that so much. And I did just measure the inside of my rear triangle spacing and it is around 135, I think. And these need to go on the outside so they needs to be even larger. Wow, that simple bend brought me to 144, so I might have actually gone a bit too far. Let's go back over to the bike and see how it fits now. Okay, that actually is pretty much perfect. I hope you can get on that, but that, that's absolutely perfect. So maybe, it, you know, maybe this is actually designed to be bent because that just bent so easily and right, you know, it looks totally fine. It looks like that's the way it could have came. So I'm gonna go ahead and just punch the screws in, excuse me, bolts in that they provided to get that started. Might be a good idea to use some Loctite to ensure this stays on here very well. For some reason, mine's pretty tight. And I think I might know why. I think it's because when I painted this frame recently, I didn't block off these uh, small, these small uh, threaded holes. Well, don't I feel foolish. I actually have this mounted backwards. This part is supposed to go to there and this part's supposed to go to the back. And I only realized that when I started putting this mount on and I'm like, how does that go? It's supposed to slide in here. Uh, let me go ahead and take this back off, flip it. Okay, and this bracket is intended to go just like that. Pretty simple. I kind of wish they used Allen head bolts instead of uh, screws because 
I just think they're better <laughs> pretty much in every way. Uh, definitely it'll be less likely that I'll, I'll cam it out. That's very tight. I think it's just because I didn't cover these holes up. I really should start doing that when I paint frames. Uh, stick, stick bolts and everything and makes it would make it easier now. Okay, I went digging through my bits and bobs bucket, basket, whatever, and I did find a Allen capped bolt, so I feel much better about that. All right, there we go. Smoke that down. Okay, done. Now with the mount finished, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the basket and hope it lines up with that mount, and it does. It looks like it's going to line up pretty good. Okay, bike's on the ground now, and I ended up taking the saddle and the seat post out just to make it a little bit easier to work with here. My, one of my first impressions are this actually looks better than I expected. I wasn't sure if I was going to dig the style. This is, I almost kind of was afraid it was almost too much of a 70s style. You know, I wasn't really going for a super vintage look here, but it actually looks really sharp. So um, now that I have the saddle off, I can, I can also see that this is too far forward. It's not level. It's really sticking up in the back. And there's different slots here, and I'm going to go ahead and undo the hardware and try to, try to see if I can get it into the middle slot or even the far back slot. I'm not sure which one yet. Yeah, we're just going to have to bend to this a bit. Go ahead and set that back there. Try to bend it up. A little. There we go. That's pretty much the ticket. That was too easy. Now I've installed a number of rear racks and baskets now in my time and what I found is almost every time you just have to kind of expect that you're gonna have to bend things <laughs> and just make them work. They rarely, rarely does everything work correctly right out of the box right as you go. Every bike is a little bit different so they can't really make these, this type of equipment work perfectly for everything. So you should expect that if you do this type of stuff, you're probably gonna have to be a little bit creative. Okay, it's fully installed and I gotta say, that looks really good, actually better than I expected. Let me just pan so you can see the whole bike. I also have the Wald 137 on the front. Uh, I'll put a link to that video too if you're interested in how I did a custom mount for that. But yeah, the Wald 215. It looks pretty nice now that I look at it. And it feels extremely solid. I don't know what the maximum recommended weight is, but my goodness, this feels almost like the frame itself. That's there's a little bit of suspension or give, but gosh, that's that's solid. That's dang solid, so. So anyway, that's about it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please do leave them down below. See you guys next time, bye.